Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Maurice Bishop, and today I want to show y'all um, this beautiful game um, between um, Pontus Carson and Javier um, Javier Benito Campos Moreno. Um, this game was uh, happened back in 2006. Uh, it was round one. Um, it doesn't clarify what kind of tournament it was, but um, I do know this was um, round one of the tournament. Uh, at the time, uh, Pontus Carson was like a 24-30, rated 24-30, and uh, Javier Benito was rated uh, like 24-63, I believe. Oh, actually 24-73, that's what he was, 24-73. So that's what he was rated. But I actually uh, imported this game because I wanted to show y'all uh, this. I'm telling y'all, man, this is um, a beautiful move that Pontus Carson um, played. Pontus Carson played as white. Uh, Javier Benito Campos Moreno um, played as black. Uh, this is actually, uh, and I want to show you this game because this is actually one of the techniques that you can actually um, use in your game, especially if um, you were someone that played against the Sasayan um, um, dragon variation. So this can give you all um, a little idea of, you know, what you can do. But this was um, pretty beautiful. And I haven't seen anybody did a, a game analysis on this one. So... Uh, I don't know if I'm the first one to give analysis on this, but if I am, you know, I'm, I'm happy. But if not, then, hey. But, hey, this is uh, this is for y'all guys, all right? So without further ado, let's actually get started. Um, Pontus Carson played E4. Uh, C5 is played. Knight F3. D6. D4. C catches D4. Knight catches D4. Knight F6. Knight C3. Uh, G6 is played. Now, this is the start of... The Sicilian defense, which is the uh, dragon variation. So what I'm pretty much saying, this is the start of the dragon variation. Uh, once black uh, hits that G6. Uh, Bishop B3 is played. Bishop G7, F3. Uh, this is the start of the Yugoslav attack. Uh, I used to call this the Samus because it was kind of like similar, uh, especially with the uh, F3 push. You know, the whole point is the uh, with F3... Uh, G4 and H4 with a pawn storm uh, attacking the king side, so that's that was the point of it. And also F3 is also um, good to prevent the knight from going to G4, trying to attack this dark square bishop. All right. So A6 is played. Bishop C4 very aggressive. Uh, again, this sign that Bobby Fischer um, played. The infamous Bobby Fischer. Uh, he always played uh, Bishop C4. Uh, knight B to D7, Bishop B3, uh, Knight C5, uh, Queen D2, again, Queen D2, um, getting ready to exchange this on um, Dark Square Bishop, but also is giving him options to maybe if he want to cast a Queen side, you know, or maybe King side, but however, with an attack like this, uh, White usually prefer castling Queen side. But uh, Knight catches B3 is played, uh, C catches B3 is played. Um, he castles king side, um, castle queen side, like I told you before. Um, B5 is played, and on um, king B1. Now, king B1 is more of a prophylactic move. Uh, it just, you know, getting the um, king out the way for any other, like, dark square checks. You know, who knows if the bishop, you know, comes out in the diagonal, which rarely, but you never know. But also, it's also to prevent, you know... Like I said, if, if queen uh, a5 goes here and then this knight on c3 has to leave, at least this king will, uh, on b1 will protect his a2 point. So it, it's a lot of reasons why king b1, up, which is still a great move, actually. Um, bishop b7, you know, he's um, having yet getting his last um, piece out uh, on the board because that bishop on c8 is not doing nothing on his diagonal. Not on e6, uh, f5, g4, h3. Can't do nothing, so he has to come and do something on this diagonal. Uh, H4 is played. Like I said, this is the start of the um, pawn storm. H4. B4 is played. Uh, knight A4 is played. Uh, now, I know when I looked at the uh, the engine, uh, I, I see uh, they said knight E2, uh, which kind of makes sense uh, with knight E2, maybe pawn G4, and then knight G3, and then pushing on H5. I mean, that's... Uh, uh, option too, but uh, knight a4 was played, and usually, uh, from what I've been told from high rated players, uh, some strong players would go knight e4, it just to prevent this queen from going to a5, 
or it doesn't really prevent him from going to a5 but the whole point is if the black queen goes to a5 uh there's really no attack that he can like he can't get through because his knight is in a way and everything uh and of course uh this bishop uh would love to go bishop c6 to you know maybe take that knight out or whatever but this knight is on c6 or i'm sorry this knight is on d4 guarding the c6 square um so that's one of the reasons why uh knight a4 was played and then not only that uh potentially this bishop is on e3 so this knight can have a nice um b6 um post uh once this knight on d4 is out the way as well so i, I thought knight a4 was actually of a good move than me you know some say it's not too it's not accurate but i kind of like knight e4 you know especially if you play it well so rook b8 is played uh, h5 is played, um, e5 is played to get this, um, knight on d4 out the way, because again, I'm, I'm pretty sure the bishop will love to go, on c6 to try to open up the king as much as possible, and plus this light square bishop is not doing nothing at all, like, it, it has no activity, uh, right now, so the whole point of e5 is to get this knight out the way, and, you know, and then, Pretty much exchange this bad light square bishop and uh, take that knight on a4, which makes sense. And that's another principle that you need to realize. Uh, if you have a bad bishop or a bad piece or whatever, and you see that it's not doing nothing and it can't get in a fight, you might as well uh, exchange, uh, try to change that piece off. You know, just to get the uh, the inactive the inactive piece out the way. Because the longer that you uh, keep your bad bishop or your bad knight or whatever, you know, out of the game, the more it will become worse for you. So you want to get that out the way as soon as possible. Or at least uh, instead of exchanging it, try to find uh, the piece at a better square. And um, and not just a better square, but put them on an active square where the, uh, the piece can be very active. That's what you want to do. So if you can't find any active squares for your piece or any activity, then you need to exchange the piece off. So always remember that. All right, so e5. Now, this is what I wanted to show y'all. Uh, he goes e5. Now, y'all probably wondering, well, he just gave him a free point. Why not take it? Well, I could tell y'all why they won't take it. Uh, he didn't take it. If knight captures h5, right, then you got knight f5. If um, bishop h8... Knight a6 check, um, king g7, rook captures h5 then. So if the pawn captures on a6, you got queen f2. Um, if queen, you know, maybe queen a5 will come in trying to guard uh, the square or whatever, uh, then rook d5 comes in. And then if bishop captures d5, then you just made a mistake. Queen g3 check, queen f6, queen f4. Obviously, you don't want to go king e6 because this would be checkmate. But it really doesn't matter anyway because after uh, king g7, then queen g5 is checkmate. Or, guys, let's say uh, bishop e5. Let's say bishop e5. If bishop e5, then rook captures h5 um, is bananas, man. Uh, if he takes um, bishop a7, uh, e6, uh, knight captures d6. Bishop captures, bishop captures the rook. Definitely you don't want to capture with the bishop because then you just lose your rook. So the position will look like this and then you'll still win this piece back. So you don't want to do that. So of course, uh, so of course, um, hold on y'all. So if bishop captures d6, then bishop captures b8, and then he'll have to take back with the queen, and then queen captures d6, e6, and rook captures d6 is played. So in this position, um, white will actually have a better game, and white should actually uh, win this, because again, this bishop is really not a good bishop at all. I consider it a bad bishop, um, and this pawn will potentially be weak as well. The rook is already uh, controlling his d-file. Uh, his pawn formation is very nice, you know, and then he has an active uh, knight, you know, as well, because he could go to knight c5 and do some damage. So, uh, why, why should uh, win his game, you know? 
Um, another another thing uh, I wanted to show y'all. So after knight f5, so y'all probably thinking, what about um, if g catches f5? Well, g catches a, uh, f5, then rook catches f5. That's pretty much all that is uh, with that. So <laughs> doesn't matter which one you take it with. But uh, yeah, capturing that pawn would be um, pretty um, bad <laughs> if he takes that pawn. All right. But anyway, after h5, e5 is played. Uh, knight, e, uh, knight d to e2, um, d5 is played, and then h capture g6, uh, h capture g6. Now, rule of thumb, y'all, um, when y'all have a Fanchetto bishop and everything, uh, regardless if it's um, with black or regardless if it's with white, um, the principle is always take with the h pawn. Um, you don't want to take... Um, with the f pawn because now you leave this on um, square very weak because as you can see uh, knight c5 will come in not only hitting the light square bishop but also uh, knight e6 uh, can um, get real dangerous as well and this knight c5 is a very uh, great post as well so that was one of the reasons why f capture g6 um, heavier didn't take with the f pawn because of this weakness on the e6 square so that's why he actually took it with um, h capture g6. Alright. So h capture g6, h, uh, h capture g6, and then um, bishop h6 is played. So d capture g4, bishop capture g7, and then, and I'm, I'm going to tell y'all right now, uh, d capture e4 was actually a blunder. Uh, I'm going to tell y'all why. <laughs> D catches E4 was, man, I'm telling y'all, and, and honestly, y'all, and I don't even think he even saw it, I don't think he even calculated all the way through, but yeah, that was a blunder, because after Bishop catches G7, man, it's pretty much all over, why? Because after Queen captures D2, Bishop captures F6, <laughs> and now the Rook <laughs> is threatening Rook H8 me, so now the White didn't even have to take, and I'm pretty sure he thought that he was going to take the queen back or whatever, and then maybe black would uh, take the bishop, but that wasn't the case. Um, Pontus Carson actually just took the knight off on f6 with, and, and didn't even bother to take back the queen. And this was like a brilliant, brilliant move, a very brilliant move. So, uh, of course, um, Javier had, you know, pretty much forced to take off the queen on d1 and rook catches d1. And then, of course, uh, Javier... Um, Benito Campos Moreno actually resigned in his position. Why did he resign? Because there is no way that he could stop this rook from getting to h8 at all whatsoever. Um, for instance, even if e catches f3, you know, rook h1, and it doesn't matter what he does, he's not going to be able to stop this um, rook going to h8 at all. Simple as that. All right, guys, um, I hope y'all uh, enjoyed this um, video. Please like, please share, please comment. Definitely let me know your thoughts. Uh, if y'all have another analysis that y'all had in mind um, with this game, please um, comment below. Um, let me know exactly uh, what y'all think of this game. And um, if y'all have any other information on the Swedish Grandmaster, um, Pontus Carson, definitely um, comment below about him. Or if y'all have anything about Javier, um, Benito Campbell's Moreno, um, definitely um, and put that in the uh, this, um, in the comments below. And all y'all, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> all right, y'all, peace.